Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from stepbystepainting.net and I am going to demonstrate how to paint Winter Wonderland. This is a 10 by 20 canvas, so it's one of those long style canvases. Um, if you go to my website or if you're looking at this video, um, there's a link to the, um, the tutorial and it it shows you that you can also do this as an 11 by 14. So I have a traceable for both the 10 by 20 and the 11 by 14 if you wanted to adjust that size. But I like working on these long canvases every once in a while. It gives you some creativity and it's kind of a challenge to even do a landscape because landscapes are usually wide, but this is a long canvas. So doing a landscape on a long canvas is an extra challenge. So this is kind of a challenge painting if you're up for it. Really beautiful winter landscape with a cabin. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna draw out the basic composition for this landscape first. So you see the little picture pop up on the right, that's the traceable that I have that you are welcome to download and print and use to trace to your canvas. But I'm gonna draw this. I'm actually gonna just draw the um, basic composition. So the horizon line and some of the land division for the landscapes. When I do landscape paintings, I like to kind of divide up the land a little bit, starting with the horizon line, which is a very important part of the landscape. So everything above the line is the sky and everything below is the land. So I drew a long wavy line at the very top of the painting. It's about six and a quarter inches from the top of the canvas. And then I'm going to draw the stream that is going from the horizon line all the way to the bottom. So to do the stream, I'm going to do just the line right now. I'm not going to make it a shape. So I'm doing a wavy line that starts out kind of close together because it's further away, but the wavy line eventually stretches out further from itself and gets longer and more stretched as it goes to the bottom because we want to create some perspective in this landscape. So our stream is getting smaller in the distance. So I had that line go down to the bottom and then kind of go off to the side of the canvas. I'm gonna draw this hill on the bottom. So if you look at the right picture, there's this foreground hill. And that hill is going to go down and kind of cut the stream off a little bit. So that line goes all the way across the canvas. And then I'm going to create this or make the stream into a shape so it's not just a single line. Uh, so I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm just going to, on each side of that line I drew, I'm gonna do a similar line so that it turns this line into a shape. So on each side, so the stream is larger on the bottom and then it gets closer and more condensed as it goes in the background. And I'm doing this very light and sketchy. As I go along, I'm kind of adjusting my lines. And back here, that stream gets very narrow and closer together, way in the distance, almost turns into a single line. I'm just kind of going back over my sketch. So there's our stream. And then it gets to the bottom of the canvas and it goes to that bottom hill area and then off the canvas. I am not going to draw the trees or the moon or the cabin or the bridge in this. You are welcome to do that if you want. I am just going to draw the basic element. So I'm actually going to draw one more line down here. This is the hill line where our cabin is going to rest on. And that's pretty much it for the drawing portion of this. Um, again, if you want to draw the other elements, you can. Um, one of the things, one of the reasons why I'm not drawing all the other elements is because I'm going to be painting over everything anyway. But these basic lines kind of help me get started with um, div dividing my canvas up so that I can start filling in the parts of the landscape. So I am going to start from the sky and work my way down. So when I do landscapes, I always start, most of the time I start at the top where the sky is and then I work my way down the canvas. So my sky... I did with three colors. I used titanium white, turquoise blue, and primary blue. These are the paints that are in the 48 piece Liquitex Basics set. And I'm using a three quarter inch flat wash brush. This is the Princeton Velvet Touch three quarter inch flat wash brush. Of course, you can use different brands of paints and different brushes. You don't have to use the exact materials that I'm using. And I tilt my canvas here. Um, so that we can see all of it while I'm doing this. Um, but this is a blended swirl circle background. I use this kind of background a lot. So we have our moon 
um, that is not center in the canvas, it's on the left center part of the canvas. So just find an area in the center left of your canvas and paint a white circle. So I'm just dipping the white on the tip of the brush and I'm painting a circle. So I'm gonna make this circle larger than the moon because we wanna use that white to help blend the other colors. So I painted the circle about three or four inches wide. Then without rinsing the brush, I'm gonna grab a little bit of that turquoise and kind of brush it out on the palette. So I'm kind of distributing that white into the turquoise and then I'm gonna go onto the canvas. So I'm gonna start on the outside of the white circle and I'm gonna very, very carefully introduce that turquoise into the white. So as I'm painting over it, that turquoise should be turning white, but I'm gonna leave the very center blank. You can see my moon kind of turned into a half crescent moon, which is kind of cool. I guess I, if you wanted to do that kind of moon, you can, but I will eventually paint over that and make it a circle again. Um, and then grab some more turquoise and then go outwards with it. So what we wanna do is we wanna have a bright center around the moon and we want our sky to gradually get darker as it goes on the outside. So I grabbed some more white on my brush. Titanium white helps with the blending. So I'm just taking that white and kind of blending it in that transition zone where that light turquoise turns into more of a turquoise. I can add some more white on the outside part of it. Um, I'm not trying to make it a gradient, like a perfect gradient. It's okay if we have streaks of white in the sky. Um, makes it kind of, gives it that swirly glowing moon effect. And then I'm gonna grab my primary blue. So I haven't rinsed my brush yet. I just grabbed the primary blue, again, kind of wiped it out on the palette a little bit to let that turquoise mix. And um, primary blue actually blends very nicely with the turquoise. And so starting on the outside of the turquoise, again, doing circular strokes and then blending it in with the turquoise. Now, um, I'm trying not to go under the horizon line, so I'm stopping my brush when I get to that hill. If you go over the horizon line a little bit, that's okay, because we can always paint that snowy hill over any of the sky. And then you want it to go off the canvas at the top. So on the outer parts of the sky, those are pure primary blue so it's all of that blue on the outer part um, it's the darker part of the sky so I'm just grabbing a lot of primary blue as I get to that part and it's still going in a curved direction and kind of blending and working that paint that transition zone is where that turquoise and blue meet so I'm kind of going over that area several times to allow it to blend so we have our white in the center, turns to a light turquoise, turns to a turquoise, and then turns to the primary blue color. I'm gonna continue this on the other parts, other side of the sky here. So doing that corner with the primary blue and letting it blend with the turquoise. I can also grab more turquoise on my brush if I wanna get those two colors to blend some more. So I grab turquoise and blue, it helps it to blend and just trying not to get too dark in the center because that center part should be nice and bright where that moon is. I can grab some more white and then do some lighter streaks in there to get that to blend. You just wanna be careful not to over blend because then all of a sudden everything's the same color. So letting that kind of blend gently, doing some white. Maybe there's some white streaks in there and it got super bright right there, but that's okay. I'll just let those white streaks kind of distribute in the rest of the sky. We wanna create that effect that the moon is creating these ice crystals in the sky. So we're doing lots of white streaks in there, but just be careful not to do too much white. Titanium white is a strong color and it can take over very fast. Doing some white right there in the center. Again, I'll go back over my moon and make it more of a circle. So I'm gonna rinse my brush off and grab the number eight round brush. This is the Princeton Velvetich number eight round brush and I'm gonna make my moon more of a circle. So I just have the white on my brush and I'm just gonna take it and actually turn that into a circle shape by going over that. It's okay if a little bit of turquoise just kind of got in there accidentally because it's not dry, that's okay. I'm making that circle. To 
The circle is about three quarter inches wide. And then I can leave it like this if I wanted to. I actually want to go a little bit advanced here. I want to do some dry brush strokes because I really like the look of the halo effect around the moon. So I'm just taking my brush. There's only a little bit of white on my brush here. And this is kind of dry brush because I'm doing it very fast, very dry, kind of feathery, allowing some um, streaks of white to kind of go around the moon. Next, I'm going to paint the stream in, and that was done with titanium white and primary blue. So I'm freshening both of those colors on my palette. And I'll be using the number eight round brush for this step. So I'll get that. I'm gonna get my three quarter rinsed off and set to the side there. I'm gonna get my round brush ready. So I took it out of the water and kind of patted it dry. So it's still a little bit wet, but not dripping. I'm gonna mix equal parts primary blue and titanium white. A little bit more titanium white than the blue. Um, let's see what this looks like. So maybe a little bit more blue. So yeah, about equal parts of both of those colors. So you have um, kind of a lighter version of that primary blue. And then I'm going to paint my stream in. So I'm going to do horizontal strokes, filling in that shape that I drew with all horizontal strokes. You can make it, in fact, I recommend that you make it a thin layer, a little bit of paint on the brush, or a little bit of water on the brush will allow that paint to kind of thin out a bit. And um, doing horizontal strokes all throughout that shape. So as I'm going down, my strokes are still going flat and horizontal all the way down. And I am on purpose kind of varying my blue. So that means that when I reload, I might grab a little bit more blue. And then the next time I reload, I might grab a little bit more light blue or a little bit more white. So that time I just grabbed some more of that primary blue. So my color is actually kind of changing um, gently. Um, to give it some variation in color so it's not the same shade of blue all throughout. Or tint of blue, since we're using white, it's a tint, not a shade. And I'm just going to continue to do, do that. Utilize the water to th make the paint thin. So when we get to this area where it's kind of thick, I'm kind of I'm going to have to kind of press harder on my brush to make my stroke a little bit thicker. So I'm going to continue down that river. Filling it up using all horizontal strokes. Um, one thing you notice is I'm kind of going outside my lines a little bit. And that was also done on purpose. Um, so it's not exactly um, the perfect shape. Like if I outlined it and painted it in. Um, it makes it look a little bit more realistic um, if the lines are kind of going outside. So you can see those horizontal lines kind of overlapping part of where my snow is going to be and just continue filling in your shape left and right strokes all the way down um, vary your blue so add more a little bit primary blue when you go to reload utilizing that water so you can see i'm loading my brush in the water and then grabbing that paint this is because i want this layer to be very thin and flat so we don't have thick strokes here at all. This will give your oh, make, give it the impression that it is water because it's flat and thin. And then when we do our snow, we're gonna make those strokes kind of thicker and more uh, curved shaped. But these are flat and thin strokes. Um, if you want to get creative, you can add a little turquoise in there. Again, that turquoise blends very nicely with that primary blue. So if you want to, um, down here, I actually grabbed a little bit of that turquoise color and kind of added it into the water. So this part of the water is kind of larger. It's where our river gets kind of wider and larger at the bottom. Um, but remember, there's a hill, so it's not going all the way to the bottom of the canvas, but it does it does go off on the side. And I'm just kind of spreading my strokes up so we have our river painted in and next we'll start adding our snow so if you look at the final uh, landscape what it looks like the snow is actually slightly dark and shadowy way in the background and so we want to do that we want to create a snow color 
So I'm utilizing that blue slash little turquoise on my brush and mixing it with white on my palette to create kind of an icy blue color. So I'll distribute a little bit more a primary blue in there. So you should create a very light icy blue color and this is going to be our shadowy snow area that's way in the back just under the horizon line. I'm going to start from the back and work my way down the canvas. So I'm going to take that. This is still that number eight round brush by the way. I haven't switched brushes yet. Didn't even rinse my brush off yet. And I'm doing that horizon line hill that's way in the background. And especially if you overlap some of your sky, this would be a good opportunity to go over that and define that horizon line so our sky is not covering it anymore. So I'm taking that icy blue color that I created and outlining that hill line. And then I'm just going to kind of take that and go down with it. So there is our shadowy part of our snow in our landscape that's just on that horizon line. And I'm going to continue my way down the canvas. So I'm, I made more of that icy blue color on my palette and I'm just going to keep going. So these strokes are a little thicker than our water strokes and they're curved. So see how I'm kind of going in a curved direction with it? I'm going to grab some more white on the tip of my brush. Thicker paint strokes too. I'm not really watering it down as much. So I'm taking that white and my land is starting to get lighter as I work my way down. So there's a shadowy area way in the distance and now my snow is getting lighter. So you can see just by varying that blue and white and using those thicker kind of curved strokes, I can create different variations of color in that snow. And I'm just going to continue down. So as I work my way down, my snow is actually getting lighter and lighter, but there's still some streaks of that shadowy snow area. I'm not painting over my river, so I'm stopping at the river part. So I'm going to create my shadowy icy blue color again and continue that over here on the right. This got a little bit darker because I grabbed some turquoise in there and it allowed it to be darker, um, but that's okay because we can have different areas of shadowy land depending on where that light's hitting that land in the distance. And we want that color variation. So um, it's not just all solid white in our snow. Uh, we have different tints of our blue and turquoise and white to create different shadows in that snow. So again, thick, long, sort of wavy strokes stopping at the river. So we don't want to paint over the river at all. And we want over here on the left, I'm get, letting my land gradually get lighter and lighter. So we're going to continue down the canvas. Eventually, I'm going to introduce a new color to my palette here. And that'll allow us to create some different gray colors in our snow. If you look at the bottom of the landscape, there's some blue gray color in that. It's not all just blue and white. So um, I'm going to actually freshen up some white on this and grab the color blue gray. So this is blue gray. If you don't have blue gray, you can use any gray that's in your uh, paint collection. So if you want to use neutral gray value five or like a pooter gray or any any gray that you may have, that's fine. That can be substituted. I like this blue gray color because there is blue inside of the gray. So it helps with the um, it goes very nicely with the other blues in this painting. And so I'm just going to continue down. Um, we ideally just need to paint all that blank spot, all the blank parts of our landscape with that snow. So I'm taking the white right here, thick sort of curved strokes on each side of the river. And this area of our land is a little bit brighter. So I'm using mostly white, but there's still some streaks of that blue that's kind of blending with it. Going over my river a little bit. Some of that snow's kind of overlapping that river. So I'm just taking that thick strokes with the white going all the way down. Then here's my blue gray. So I'm going to introduce my blue gray in here. I only grabbed a little bit right there on the tip of the brush. I'm going to start at the bottom, kind of blend that up into the white. 
I'm doing these curved strokes on the edge of that river right there, but creating a shadowy area right there on the bottom with that blue gray. And I'm just gonna continue and go back over with some more layers of that white. Um, you can do this differently if you wanted to add more blue gray like at the top or um, not add as much blue gray. The, the point is that we just wanna create some variations in our color of our snow color in the land um, and just continue to do kind of thick, um, sort of slightly curved strokes on each side of the river. So over here, again, grabbing a little bit of that blue gray, blending it up, just kind of distributing it very gently into the snow. We don't want it to get too dark. We're just using that blue gray to kind of create some shadows in our snow and Make sure next to the river it's kind of thick and curved. Grabbing that white, thick, curved, kind of long strokes in there. Letting that blue gray kind of gently blend with the white. And I'm just gonna keep going down with this. So this kind of a shadowy part of our land right here because I grabbed a whole bunch of blue gray. And then down here, same thing, just take that white, kind of blend it up left and right, kind of just letting that paint do its thing, letting that gray gently blend with the white. Um, don't forget about your land on the bottom. There's a foreground hill at the bottom that kind of divides up the back of that land. So above that hill, I actually grabbed some more of that blue gray to make it look kind of shadowy behind that bottom hill. And I blended that blue gray up and then our actual hill is shadowy on the bottom. So I'm actually gonna start with the blue gray at the bottom. So down here, really um, sort of a dark contrasted area. If you look at the final painting, it is a lot of blue gray at the bottom and it blends up to a lighter white at the top. So that's how we can create that illusion of that land, that kind of hill that's in the foreground. So blue gray at the bottom and then grabbing that white I'm gonna blend that white with the blue gray and that white is gonna get lighter and lighter. That top of that hill is white. So I'm just taking that white, blending it, defining that top of the hill, kind of a curvy, bumpy line right there, letting that blue gray blend up so you can see how that hill is dividing up the land. And I'm just going in here and blending that blue gray at the bottom up with the white. My brush is overloaded at this point, so I wiped it up so that I can grab more of that white, blend it down. So again, I want my hill to be bright white at the top and fade quickly to a shadowy area. If I wanted to, or if you want to, you can go in and um, add some more shadowy areas kind of all throughout the land. Now. A lot of this white has dried, so it's not workable. So if I want to go in and add some random shadowy areas, I'd have to grab more white on my brush and re-blend that out. Because that paint dries fast. We have a big surface area to work with. Sometimes it dries way too fast and we can't go back and blend it. But we can always grab more of that color that we want it to blend it with and let it blend. So. That's it for my snowy land. I have the first, my base of my landscape all painted in and now we can go on to the next step. So I'm gonna do some white horizontal lines on my stream to kind of make it look like our stream is sparkly, reflecting from the moon. Um, just doing these very thin white horizontal lines using, still using the eight round brush, loading the white right there on the tip of my brush. And I'm doing these very gentle, thin white lines across um, horizontally across the river and going up all to the horizon line. So the lines get very thin and kind of disappear way in the distance. And then they're kind of longer uh, towards the bottom of our river stream. 
And next we're going to start adding in some of these pine trees into our painting. So I used a fan brush for the three snowy pine trees. Um, there's a large one right here and there's two smaller ones in the distance. So it's about the center of the canvas where our larger one is. And I'm gonna load my palette with Mars Black. So black is the first layer of these trees. So there's our Mars Black. You don't need a lot of black to do this. And I have my fan brush. This is a, a kind of a smaller bristled fan brush. The bristles are not that wide. It's about an inch, maybe a little less than an inch wide. Easier to work with. Um, dipping the brush in the water and distributing it into the paint. So a little bit of water to thin that black paint out. You don't want it to be drippy wet, but it's harder to work with the black paint if it's too thick. So you can see loading it in the brush, my bristles are all kind of spread out. And I'm gonna make a little mark, vertical mark for the top. So that's where the top of the tree is going to be. And then I'm gonna use the angle, the kind of the side uh, corner of the brush and just kind of tap it to create little marks for the top of the tree. It's a conical shaped tree, so my branches are thin and narrow at the top. So I can only use that corner of that fan brush to tap. And then I'm kind of, I'm tapping in a zigzag direction. And when I get closer to the bottom of my tree, I'm using all those bristles. So I'm using the full width of my fan brush by this point, just the tip of it. And I'm tapping it and going in a zigzag direction going from the left to the right. So zigzag, tapping it left to right, creating that conical shape. Um, every once in a while, I'll dip a little bit of water right there at the tip, distribute it. I'm kind of brushing that black as I'm loading it onto the palette and tapping it very gently, going left and right in a zigzag direction. Um, my branches are kind of pointing down, so I'm kind of making it going in a curved um, direction with the branches pointing down. And I'm gonna go down to where I want that bottom of the tree is. This is our large tree. So it's the base of that tree is about in the middle of the canvas. So I can figure out where I want to stop it. You can go down further and create a, a larger tree if you wanted to. Um, if you need your branches to overlap part of the river, that's okay. So there's our large tree. And um, when the black dries, we'll add a layer of snow onto it. But then we're gonna do the two smaller trees. Again, do the same thing again. So make a little tiny mark where you want the top of the tree is. Start by using only one of the corners of your of your fan brush. You don't want to use all the bristles just yet until you get kind of towards the bottom. This is the same thing, only the tree's smaller and the base is much further away. So I'm not gonna go all the way down and make it larger. It's gonna stop and this is gonna be our smaller tree. And I'm gonna make one that is nearly identical to it. And it starts at the same part and it stops at the same part. So I'm just doing, going down. So we have those two smaller trees or trees that are further away. I made that one go down a little bit further. So maybe that one is in front of the other one. If you wanted to add more trees, you can. I did not put any pine trees on the left. I didn't put any fan brush pine trees on the left, um, but we can add some shrubbery things into the snow, uh, maybe some dead grass or some twigs. Um, I'm actually gonna take my fan brush and um, kind of brush it on my landscape in certain areas, such as the top of this hill. So there's some um, grass that's kind of sticking up behind the hill and on the bottom of the hill of the land that's kind of on the right behind the river. So I'm just taking that brush and just kind of brushing it up to create that texture. 
I guess it wouldn't be dead grass. It would be dormant grass or dormant plants. Um, another thing you can do to add some more texture in the land is just tap it and kind of just create a curvy sort of area. I'm just tapping the brush and it creates kind of an indent in the snow. Maybe there's kind of a rocky ridge rigid area right there it just creates some contrast in your snow some different darker areas to look at so that has some variety of things in the land maybe this one could have some more dormant shrubbery kind of sticking up so that's just an extra thing that you can do with your fan brush another technique you can do um, to create that texture in the land um, one thing that I didn't point out was there's not a lot of paint on my brush. So if that was thickly loaded with paint, it wouldn't really do the effect. It would be too thick. So only a little bit of paint on your brush to do that technique. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the snow of the trees. Now that that black may not be dried all the way, but that's okay. Cause if that white kind of blends and makes it turn gray, I'm just going to kind of use that to my advantage, but to do the snow, it's this same thing. Only we're going back over it with white. So that same technique of creating that tree, stamping it from the top, zigzag left and right down to create the conical shape, doing this same exact thing. Only we're using white and um, I'm not going to cover all the black. I'm only I'm going to kind of do less strokes, if that makes sense, and make sure a lot of my black is still showing, but that white is creating a layer of snow in my tree. The white is also not thinned out. So the stroke of the paint is a little bit thicker than my black. Um, and also I mentioned that it might turn gray. It turned gray towards the bottom and that's okay. It can be kind of shadowy area of the snow. So I'm doing the same thing to these smaller trees, thicker layers of paint, but same technique. And then I'll do my third tree. So same thing, tapping it, just using that corner of it and then going down and using the full width of the bristles, thicker layers of paint. So those pine trees with the fan brush come with a lot of practice and I just recommend practicing them in a sketchbook. If that's something that you want to achieve, I have a tutorial for how to do these um, with the fan brush. And once you really get the technique down and the motion of the brush, it really is just super simple and it um, looks great in all your landscape paintings to use the fan brush trees. So next I'm going to demonstrate how I did the aspen tree. So there's two aspen trees on the lower part of the landscape and they go very tall up into the sky. So I loaded my palette with blue gray and I'm mixing a little bit of Mars black into it to darken it. So it's kind of a dark blue gray. I am putting a little bit of water on the bristles and distributing that into the paint so it can thin out so that my line will be flowy. So it's a thin line and it's going to be flowy. So I'm going to start at the bottom, just kind of make a little horizontal curve right there. And this tree is going to go all the way to the top. And so I'm just kind of sketching that as I go up, the trunk is a little bit thicker on the bottom and the trunk, get, trunk gets thinner as I work my way up. So to get the thinner stroke, I'm just not pressing as hard on the brush, but the thicker stroke I'm pressing hard. Um, so, and the tree a little bit curvy on the edges. So you can give it kind of a natural shape by making the edges not exactly, um, straight you can kind of make the edges a little bit wavy and then when i get to the top my tree is going to branch out so to let it branch out i'm just going to use the tip of it and release the pressure and my line gets thinner and goes to a point so i'm going to branch this one out too so tip of the brush branch it out kind of a loose sort of wavy line um, try not to cover your moon i'm going to make my branches go uh, around the moon and not cover the moon because I want my bright white circle to really show through those trees. And then we'll add some more branches in here as well. And we'll add like different color branches like black and white. But for now, I'm just going to do just a few basic smaller branches, maybe one down here towards the bottom. 
And then my next tree is actually thinner and it goes to the right. So this piece is going to be thinner. And just the tip of the brush, it's kind of going diagonal, but not too diagonal, kind of slanted to the right. Using the tip of the brush to do those loose sort of wavy lines. This tree has some smaller branches at the top. Again, I'm not covering any of my moon. I'm making sure my branches go on the side of it. Underneath the tree here, I took that blue gray and just did a little bit of shadow on under both those trees. Just some quick horizontal strokes just under those trees and you can water it down a little bit so it's more loose. A few little horizontal strokes under some of my shrubbery over here. Gives it's a little bit shadow. And maybe I can have it kind of hanging out on the side of the river. And then I wanna do some more branches in here. So I'm loosening up this Mars black with some water, kind of twisting my brush so that paint is right there on the tip. I'm just gonna add a few more branches in there, some darker branches. Gives my tree some color variation with those dark branches, just a few. Just going in there, doing some very, very small thin branches. So to do these, you just use the very tip of the brush and hold it very lightly to get those thin lines. Um, since these are aspen or birch trees, um, they have the little marks on the side. So I'm taking that black and on the left side of the tree, I'm just doing these little marks with my brush. Just on the left side, just little marks, maybe a few go kind of vertical up the tree. Um, but most of them are kind of little tick marks on the left side. And I'll do that to this tree right here. This tree's thinner, so my marks are gonna be a lot smaller. So I can do just a few. Just on the left side of that trunk. Next, I'm going to do some white marks on my trees. So I'm going to rinse the brush off and dry and grab the white. So just the white on the tip of the brush and on the right side of the tree, little white marks. I'm just, just be really careful because um, it may blend in too much with the snow, especially on the white areas of the snow. Um, so I didn't put a lot of white where the white areas are um, because it would not give another contra enough contrast. But just uh, maybe a few white branches up in the sky as well, um, but just a few little white marks on the right side of the tree. Gives that tree a little bit more character. And then I'm gonna do the shadow here. So for the shadow, I watered down this the, the blue gray, so watered down to a watercolor consistency and do two diagonal um, areas underneath the tree. And there should be a gap between those two areas, but I had them kind of touch each other and I could touch that up later after this dries. I'm adding white into it to lighten it up a bit. I'll kind of redo the base of that tree because it got smudged in with my shadow. So I just grabbed a little bit of black on my brush and redid the base of that tree. And then I'm gonna get this gap in here. Kind of used my finger to kind of dry that part real quick. Um, but I'm gonna grab the white and go in there and do that gap. So we have light kind of showing between the trees. That's not casting a shadow. And then, so go ahead and make that a little bit darker. Um, then I'm going to do all the little twigs that are kind of sticking up from the snow. So I'm just taking the black on the tip of the brush and just doing little um, stems that are kind of sticking up next to the tree. But then I could do it in other places as well, kind of on the bottom of the snow area, um, further back in the middle part of the landscape. I can do them do a shadow underneath them so just a few little lines underneath to create some shadow under under those and then i want to do a little bit of the land reflecting in the water towards the bottom of our river so i'm going to make a watered down gray color. So watering this down grabbing that gray so that blue gray watered down um, 
very, very thin, and I'm just adding that to the water right there. So that part of the land is kind of reflecting into the water or frozen. It could be a frozen river if we want to look at it that way. And then we can do some twigs down here. It's a lot of space down here um, to do things. Um, and so next I'm going to demonstrate how to do the trees that are on the horizon line. So if you want to skip this step to simplify this painting, you can do that. But I'm going to do the little pine trees that are way in the distance and they're going across the horizon line. They consist of turquoise and primary blue and white. So you can freshen up your palette if you need to or you can use the colors that are already on the palette. And I'm using a number four round brush for this. Smaller brush for a smaller area. So I got my colors ready. We can start with white and grabbing a little bit of the turquoise to make it kind of an icy turquoise color. And I'm gonna twist the brush to get that paint right there on the tip. I'm gonna go across the horizon line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm making little vertical marks with my brush and we're gonna do variety. So when you go and reload the brush, get a different amount of white or blue or turquoise. So I mixed a little bit of that primary blue in there. So it's all about color variation here. We're just kind of playing with the colors on our palette, kind of grabbing the colors and not really thinking too hard about which one we're grabbing um, and doing little horizontal marks to get the branches on the trees. But some of the trees are so far away that Really, it's just like a little vertical line. So we don't see much detail in the tree. And we're gonna do this all across the horizon line. So you really twist the brush when you load it to get that paint right there on the tip that gets your thin line, makes it go to a point. So I'm just doing little vertical strokes kind of all the way across. Grab a different color next time I go reload the brush and some more vertical lines. Maybe those vertical lines are a little bit lower than those other ones, but that color variation is nice because the moon would be kind of hitting it and reflecting it differently, different colors. And little horizontal lines, but not on all of your trees. That would be very tedious to do that on every single vertical line you did. So just a few get some um, little diagonal lines actually to create the branches of those trees that are way in the distance. Maybe some of them we can see some lighter color, brighter white for the snow. So that gives the illusion of those little tiny um, palm trees way, palm trees, pine trees <laughs> way in the distance. And just going to continue on. I grabbed more blue that time. Just do little vertical marks. And you don't have to go across, all the way across the horizon line. If you want to stop somewhere and maybe the tree line stops and there's an area without trees. You can do that. Grabbing a little bit of white. Doing the little horizontal slash diagonal little marks. It's kind of um, very abstract and loose back here. Such a small area, not very many details. I suppose if I wanted to grab like a little tiny detailer brush and make individual tiny little pine trees, I can, and you can too if you want to do that. I'm going to get some more of the primary blue on here and do some darker trees as well. Wipe my brush off and load just the tip of it in that darker color and just do some darker ones over here so that they kind of stand out. It's kind of a darker area back here. Um, if I wanted to create more contrast, I could just do lighter color like white. With just a few that are darker kind of here and there. Just little vertical lines and some of the lines have the little branches. And so there's our tree line way in the distance. Uh, before I demonstrate how to get the cabin in our landscape, I want to go back in and add just a few little darker strokes in my water. So I'm getting primary blue and mixing just a teeny bit of white in there. 
And I just did a few little horizontal strokes, very thin. We don't want thick layers on our water at all, but just a few darker areas in our water. Just kind of gives a little bit more contrast in the water. Just a bit of darker blue. And then next, I will be drawing the cabin in. Pick an area that's further in the distance. So there's a line right here that we drew in um, in the beginning or you drew with the traceable. And that line, kind of a hill line, is where our cabin's gonna be situated on. If you lost your line, just kind of invent a place um, that's further in the distance and between your trees. So I'm gonna start by doing a vertical line. And so I'm just basically gonna draw a very simple house. So I'm gonna use my T-square so I can make my line perpendicular or uh, parallel to the side of the canvas actually. So doing a vertical line to make sure my cabin is not gonna be crooked or slanted. And then a triangle for the roof. Again, we're working around this tree here. And then another vertical line. I'm gonna use the T-square to line up my ruler. So I did the triangular roof and two vertical lines. And then we're going horizontal now to create the top and the bottom of that side of the roof. Very basic house drawing. And then another vertical line. So this one's going diagonal. So we have that diagonal side of the roof. This diagonal, um, the eave of the roof hangs out just a little bit. And if I want, I can kind of draw the side of that where that snow is gonna be resting. So a very basic house shape and the a base of that um, house slash cabin is gonna be a little bit covered by snow. Again, if you don't have that hill line there, we can always go back with white paint and define kind of a snowy area at the base of our cabin. Um, so next, we're gonna paint the cabin in and I will be using raw umber in Mars Black as well as a 3 8 inch angle brush. So load your palette in brown and black and use that angle brush. And you're gonna double load that in both of those colors. Um, just a little bit of paint on the tip of the brush and you're going to paint um, full width strokes to fill in the front part of the cabin as well as the side of the cabin. So I'm only doing vertical strokes, but I can use the tip of my angle brush to outline the roof um, so I can define that roof. And the bottom part is going to be covered by um, snow. There's gonna be a little bit of elevated snow at the bottom that's gonna be covering the base of that cabin. So we're not gonna see details of the base of the cabin. Um, so, but, and also, you can paint over your tree. It makes it easier to just for now paint over the tree and when the cabin dries, we'll go back and paint our tree over again. So it looks like the tree is overlapping the, camp, the cabin. It's not an optical illusion painting. So again, I'm using that tip of the brush to define the triangular part and that horizontal part, but everything else is pretty much vertical strokes. Just adding a bit more black towards the top, a little bit shadowy on the top, um, using that tip to paint that vertical line that kind of divides the front part of the cabin to the left part of the cabin. I'm gonna wipe my brush off and load the tip of it in titanium white. So just a little tiny titanium white on the brush. I'm gonna actually kind of spread it out to allow that to blend with the brown a little bit. So this is very, very light brown and this very loose hand um, doing horizontal strokes across the front part of the cabin. These ones are not horizontal, they're going slightly diagonal. Then I'm gonna rinse, dry, grab my number four round brush. And I'm gonna do the snow on top of the roof. So the number four round brush loaded in just the white. And then do that angled part of the roof. It's a little bit of a thick stroke here. So because there's snow on there, it'd be kind of a thick layer of paint. And I'm just gonna paint that roof in solid white. So I'm gonna outline the shape of the roof first and then paint it in. 
If you want, you can do a little bit of shadow. So grabbed a little bit of blue on my brush and then just a few little diagonal strokes on the far left, maybe a little bit at the top, but not too much because then it'll just blend in with everything else in the background and we won't have enough contrast. Um, in fact, it can probably just be optional if you don't want like a little shadow on the snow of the roof. Then I'm going to rinse uh, and, and get that white back. So on the bottom of the cabin, we have a hilly snowy area that's kind of piled up in front of the cabin. So go ahead and do that so that you don't see the base of the cabin. It just kind of piles up in front of it. So do kind of two little lumpy lines that kind of cover the bottom. And then we have a little yellow in this. So we have the windows of our cabin. So this is primary yellow. You can use any yellow that might be in your collection of paints. It does not have to be primary yellow. It could be cad yellow. So I'm going to mix equal parts yellow and white because yellow is not a good coverage color. It's not opaque. But putting a little bit of white in there. Sorry for the shaky camera there. A little bit of white in there when the yellow is going to um, give that opaqueness that we need. Doing a little tiny square. This is the front face of the cabin. Two squares. And then we'll do two squares on the side of the cabin. And if it looks dark, you can wait for that to dry. And you can always add another coat if you wanted it to be brighter. Then I'm gonna rinse and do my little door. So with the black, I'm actually gonna um, outline my windows with the black. So just the tip of the brush and then create the door. So a little rectangular door. Again, that snow on the bottom is kind of covering it. So we don't really see the base of that door. So we got our little tiny cabin, a very small detail in this painting, way in the distance. I imagine if you're doing this on an even smaller canvas that your cabin would be very tiny. And then I did a few little yellow reflections in the snow. So I just mixed that yellow with the white and did a few little strokes of yellow um, below um, on the snow that's kind of below the cabin. And then we can do our little chimney a little tiny, we only see like a rect uh, triangular piece sticking up right there for our chimney. And of course, it's not a chimney in winter unless we have a little smoke coming out of the chimney. So I'm gonna dry brush this smoke and dry brush means I'm loading it in the white and I'm wiping it off with the towel. And then very loosely with my brush doing very thin line. This should not be opaque at all. And if it's too opaque, wipe off some more of the brush. It should be very loose, feathery, thin, dry brush style. Just kind of curves up and then up into the moon where those spiral lines are. And then I can go ahead and redo my tree here so it doesn't look like an optical illusion. Uh, definitely if that cabin is way too wet I would wait a little bit but it was dry enough over here to where I can just get that gray and kind of go over it a little bit of black too so to go over that cabin to make it look like our tree is definitely in front of that cabin we lost a little bit of our window but that's okay so the next thing we're gonna do is draw our bridge so find a little spot on your river uh, preferably a little bit lower than the cabin to do your bridge and I'm just going to take my pencil and draw in a curved shape curved sort of rainbow shape that is going over the river and we're going to make this bridge as basic and simple as possible. I'm going to load my number four round brush in some Mars Black. So a little bit of water into that Mars black to kind of loosen it up. And I'm going to start at the bottom and paint that curved line. The curved line kind of goes diagonal to create that shape, that rainbow shape. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of white on my brush to create a gray area above the black area. So I'm doing kind of a thicker line. Then I'm going to extend that out just a little bit and do the same thing on both sides. So just some quick strokes going horizontally. Again, we're just making this very simple. 
If I want to give it some texture, I can just take that white and do little dots. Maybe there's some stone texture in that bridge. It's kind of far away, so we don't really see much of the details of it. And there would be snow on the bridge, so we can do snow as well. But I'm just doing the texture, just the dots, the white dots that are kind of blending with the gray. Then I'm going to rinse and grab some more titanium white so I can do the snow that's kind of resting on the bridge. So a uh, little thick amount of white on the tip of my brush. I'm just adding a layer of snow on the top part of that bridge and just going, having that curve with the snow. And then I'm going to go back with my black and go back and do this part down here. Make sure that's nice and dark and maybe some darker little texture dots in there as well. And there's two more steps left in this painting. One is we're going to do our splatter snow effect. So you can use a toothbrush for this or just uh, flick a regular uh, thick paintbrush like your three quarter flat. You can flick some paint. Um, test this out first on another surface before you splatter your snow everywhere. So I'm just splattering it in the sky and pretty much everywhere towards the ground, little splatters on the water. It kind of helps make the water look like it's sparkling when you do a little dots in there. Uh, but you want your white to be not too thick, but not too thin. And the last thing I'm going to do is with my titanium white um, and any of the brushes, I just grabbed that three the 3 8 inch angle brush. I just want to do some thick layers of snow kind of piling on my branches. So just a few strokes, um, relatively thick layer, just wherever the snow might be kind of piling on the branches. Maybe down here, but we really wouldn't, it wouldn't give a lot of contrast in that area if I did more snow on the bottom, but it does show up nicely where the sky is. And then I can add a bit of snow. So just some final touch, it, touch ups here and there. Just going in here. This is just the angle brush still. Um, just on the edges, on the far left and right edges. A few little thicker layers of snow. Uh, but that is it, my friends. This is the conclusion of Winter Wonderland on a 10 by 20 canvas. And I hope that you enjoyed painting this with me too. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.